Hey everybody, welcome to TonalTrends.com Songwriting and Music Theory Vlogs. So yeah, it looks like Hollywood just made the Sondheim musical Into the Woods into a movie. And to celebrate, we're going to take a real-time look at one of my favorite songs from it, entitled Agony, uh, which is the song where the princes are like complaining about their princesses, you know, like spazzing out on them. I mean, it's not like they're not spazzes too, but I mean, it's, it's a pretty funny song. It's, I like it. All right, first off, for the record, I'll be referencing the original recording and not the new movie soundtrack version. And I made that choice based on the fact that the movie's version of the tune is transposed from the original E down a semitone to E flat major, probably for the singers. And so to do it that way, though, uh, not only would I have to transpose the sheet music reference, but I also have to play E flat chords on my guitar. And I don't like to play E flat chords on my guitar because they're hard. <laughs> and anyway, speaking of hard chords, uh, this song has like 50 plus chords in it, which is a lot. And so consequentially, um, this will be the very first ever TonalTrends.com vlog where we do not one, but two uh, real-time syncs. One using this board, um, where we take a real-time look at the song in our regular, more comprehensive way. And another one, where we look at this board, uh, just the chords and their bass notes and all their augmented, diminished, inverted, add this, this, that, pedal tone, modulated glory. Anyways, here's the song's vitals. Um, we're in the key of E major starting off, um, but then in the bridge, the song takes a parallel detour to E minor, as well as then a brief modulation to F sharp major, and then finally F sharp minor. So that's four tonalities. And what's more is that these minor tonalities, um, they're not your ordinary natural or harmonic minors. Uh, these are melodic minors. But more on why that's cool a little later. Time-wise, the song's in a compound 6-8 meter, with the tempo holding around 63 uh, beats per minute. And other than that, there's a few rumentandos or slowdowns and a 9-8 measure thrown in, uh, which helps keep the song interesting for 2 minutes and 27 seconds. All right, another way our composer is keeping it interesting here is by using all these irregular form lengths. Like, check this out. We start with a regular 2-bar intro and then like 8-bar verse. It's very common. Uh, but that's it for the regular stuff, because next up there's a 7.5 bar chorus. The 0.5 is because of that little 9-8 uh, measure bar that I mentioned earlier. And then the next time we hear the verse, we add a measure to the 8 bar form from before to make it 9 bars long. Um, and then we get even more complex. Okay, one way to look at this next chorus is to view it as the double chorus of 7 plus 8 measures. Um, but as you can see, I separated this 8 into two fours. Uh, and I did that because of some new developments in the harmony that lead us into the bridge. And I'll get into that later. Next, just like the chorus, the bridge could also be thought of as a double. And that's because each prince has uh, a go at its main riff. This kind of exotic modal melodic scale motif which starts off this blue uh, four bar section here and then also this green color three bar section uh, right there um, and yeah there'll be more explanation on this coolness of this riff melodic riff later after we're done with the form all right in between those guys we return to the original key for four bars and then we modulate to f sharp major for four bars uh, here colored in red uh, which that sets us up for the second this time just three bars long parallel modulation from F sharp major to F sharp melodic minor um, underneath that's previously mentioned coolness you know melodic modal riff and then finally we return to our E major uh, ah, 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 riff uh, motif for three bars before our last chorus which is also a double chorus um, where the last four bar subsection here reworks the chorus after this fermata into like this little outro guy for the song. Incidentally, I'd like to point out that the movie version adds a measure at the end of the bridge here for extra ah um, And also there's two measures added at the end of the chorus in the movie uh, version uh, at the end of the outro for whatever they needed it for. I don't know. I haven't seen the movie yet. <laughs> um, all right, next, on to the chord types, which we will label in terms of the song's four different tonalities. Da, 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 da. Okay, again, E major is the key for the first half of the song. Uh, where we hear diatonics, uh, diatonic ones, twos in the verse, and then the chorus introduces these guys right there. And yeah, those are the first five regular major key diatonic chords. So it looks kind of like it kind of be, be boring, but I mean, it's not. And that's, here's why. Because it's like gobs and susses and adds and sevens and elevens and pretty much all the non-diatonic chord tones that you could throw into the pot. Um, there's just no funny business with the key signature itself. 
that is until here, right before the bridge, when Mr. Sondheim sprinkles in an augmented sharp fifth in the four chord, and then a Lydian sharp four into the one chord. And that's very, 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 very worth using the word very here a bunch of times to point out that these two new sharps here, which are E, uh, e sharp and A sharp, are the next two sharps in the circle of fifths beyond the key of E major. And not only that, but these two sharps are also the very next two sharps we need if we want to modulate up to F sharp major, which we will be doing in very short order. So yeah, what we have here is a nice little sneak peek or sneak listen to what's coming up real soon. But check this out, the sneak peek totally fools you because before we get there, we deke back the other way on the circle of fifths dial, taking away these new sharps and more from the E major itself um, to get you to E melodic minor. So yeah, fooled you, you got shook. <laughs> okay, uh, we're now in E melodic minor, right? And like I mentioned before, the motif here is made up of the fifth mode of the E melodic minor also known as B melodic major. But yeah, here's what the motif sounds like. Just a B melodic major scale. Na, 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 na. And so yeah, it just starts out just like a major scale, do, re, mi, fa, so. But then it switches to minor. Da, na, 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 na. So yeah, with flat seven and six. So yeah, except here's the crazy thing that totally messed me up when I first started studying this song. Even though we've got this clear B to B scale going on here in the melody, that's not the key. Why? because it's clearly harmonized using E melodic minor. Like these card types here, see, right there? Those are diatonic melodic minor chords and chord types. And when we're calling stuff stuff, the harmony always wins out over the melody. So yeah, again, the melody here is a mode of the melodic minor, the fifth mode to be exact, which just so happens to have this flip-floppy name of melodic major. Or you could also call it uh, mixo flat six if you're like a jazz person. But yeah, pretty cool, huh? Um, okay, moving on. We find ourselves back in our previously four sharp key sancher with repeated five to two chords loop a couple of times. Um, and this, these chords, by the way, they're sporting these thick uh, sus two and sus four um, notes. And it's all over this B bass pedal. And because of this pedal, not to mention the um, B to B scale leading up to it, you could also describe this as a modulation to straight up B, where the chords are actually uh, one and five. But yeah, I mean, it's super ambiguous as to whether it's one or the other, mainly because of the absence of any A sharps or A naturals in the music. I mean, they're just not there at all, either or. Um, and if they were, they could tell us what the key signature is, but they're not there, so oh well. Oh, and not to mention, there are absolutely no thirds in these chords. Like I said, they're just sus twos and fours, which means we can't be sure if they're major or minor types. So, yeah, we just can't be certain here either way, really, what our key signature is. Okay, but despite whatever's going on here, it leads us in to our next modulation up to F sharp major in this, like, six to two loop, you know, going on here. And this is followed up by some big time ickifying of this loop by flatting the sixth chord and making it augmented, and then by diminishifying the two right here. Da, 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 da. And this builds tension, pushing us into the tonality of F sharp melodic minor, uh, where, we, where we now hear that same modal melodic major scale motif again over similar melodic minor diatonics um, here. Though what you can see is that they've been rearranged quite a bit, haven't they, by their order of appearance. And part of that could be because this time the rhythm is slightly different. Also the pedal tone matches the melodic minor modal scale root uh, which it, of C sharp, which it didn't before. And also because it only lasts three measures instead of four. Oh, and this means that the line gets cut short. And this chopping off of the previous motif uh, means that we can't take that final step up. And so we find ourselves remaining one step back down in our original key of E. So it's like this, you know, start on C sharp. And then we're going to finish off minor again like we do. But then we don't finish our octave, our, so octave C sharp. We just stay on that B. And because we've cut it off there and we get there a little bit early, bam, we just modulate back down real slick like you never notice it. Oh, and also, look what we have here. We've got our diatonic six chord, uh, which is a chord type we hadn't heard in the verse or chorus. 
and which you may have been missing because of how common a quartz type it is. I mean, it's like the fourth most common uh, diatonic chord type. So yeah, it's late appearance here is of note. And also of note is the last chord type, this flat six augmented, which we actually heard before when it was up a key in F sharp. But now it's even ickier than it was before um, because we've added a seven, uh, seven scale degree, major seven, and a flatted nine scale degree to it, which creates this nasty dissonance that when it resolves, I mean, it just slingshots us back into that chorus. I mean, it's tasty. So tasty that again, the movie version decided to add a whole other measure of it. Okay, that is it for chord types, but I wanted to highlight just a few more tidbits about the melody before we preview the chords themselves um, on the next board. Okay, first thing I want to point out is that in the verses, the singers don't sing the root or the tonic or the do in the do, re, mis at all. I mean, it's just not there. But then in the chorus, it's the very first note. So they're just kind of meandering around and all of a sudden they're just like, agony, da, 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 or tonic root of the key of E major. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just saying that it really enhances itself there at that point because of the fact that you've been waiting to hear it for this entire beginning part. So yeah, no first scale degree in the first part of the song, and then boom. Next, I want to point out one of the flute bits. Remember how I said there was no funny business with the key signature until the bridge? Well, <laughs> I lied. Uh, in the middle of verse two, the flute has this riff with a flat seven over the one chord. Um, just a spicy little blue note, or flu note, because I like puns, <laughs> that uh, deserves to be pointed out. So it sounds like this. It's like, na 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 you know, na na na. So yeah, love that little guy. And last, remember how I was raving about how awesome this melodic major motif in the bridge is? Well, there's even a little bit more to it than that, because the first time we hear the scale motif, uh, the leading tone, or the major seventh scale degree of the B major, is also used in addition to the melodic flat seven. So really what you got is this hybrid melody guy sharing the flavors of both melodic and harmonic minor, as well as major, uh, because of the major third, and even shades of Lydian, since this leading tone uh, you know, seventh scale degree in B, you know, like right there, he's also the Lydian sharp four in the key we're in, in E. So cool, huh? I mean, it's like mind explosion, right? But yeah, again, that only happens the first time because the second time the motif gets cut short uh, before it could happen. All right, enough of that craziness. Let's switch to the chords themselves board. Okay, hi, uh, welcome to the chords themselves board. Uh, so yeah, pretty intimidating, right? I mean, what's the reason for all these chords? Well, there's a lot of reasons. And besides the simple reason that Sondheim is just super talented and so he can have as many chords as he wants, the other most interesting reason to me is centered in a concept I like to refer to as magnetic chords or magnetic unison chromatics. Okay, so what causes this magnetism I'm talking about? Well, basically, uh, musical harmony lives and breathes on dissonances resolving to consonances. Or in more scientific terms, sound waves that go like this, blah, 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 like electric eels, you know, having a tickle fight or whatever, resolving to sound waves that go more like this, you know, like dolphins leaping next to each other and everything's great. <laughs> But yeah, one way to take advantage of this dynamic is if we take two chords and we throw a note into the first chord that's closer in its sound wave frequency to the next chord. Usually it'll be just like a half step away or even a unison with the next chord. And the simple technique makes the chords pull on each other with a stronger force than they shared before. Like take a look at our first flatted non-triad tone here. This flat nine in the G sharp minor chord. Um, this note just happens to be the same note as the third in F sharp minor. Na, 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 na. And so whether you view this as the first chord borrowing the note from the next chord, or as a note from the second chord uh, getting there early, what you've got is just two chords that are all kind of pulling on each other more um, because of that added note. So yeah, it's just kind of like na, 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 ha, la, 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 magnets. Okay, next though, how about our first augmented chord? This A augmented with the major seven, you know? But this guy's got this kind of sharp five, we'll kind of think of it. And this guy is just one chromatic step away from the five of the next chord, B. And not only that, but the major seven in this A uh, augmented chord is also just one chromatic step away from the dominant seven of the B13. 
So this time, because you've modified a note and also because you've added a note, both the semitone closer in their frequency to the next chord, um, it's also like magnets, but now more like magnets that are pulling on each other right before they snap together, you know? And like compare this to how it would be if there was none of this and none of that. Just regular A, regular B to regular E, you know? A, B, E. I mean, that's just your four, five to one that everybody knows. But everybody knows that those... Uh, that really super popular chord change, it doesn't have that many unisons or semitone neighbors, you know, so it's not as, you know, it just doesn't bleed together as much as these guys do. So yeah, okay, magnetic, unison, chromatic chord styling. Sometimes doing this all the time. Sticky tweaked chord after pulley sticky chord. I mean, but, okay, with all these extra atoms in the reactor, and with all this extra ear-splitting dissonance, what's to keep us from storming the pit orchestra with baseball bats to save our ears? Well, if you guess volume, I'd like to agree with you. See, most of the dissonant tones, because they're so low in the mix, they sneak by your upper consciousness. I mean, they're not, you know, they're just not like loud enough to cause you too much pain. Plus, it doesn't hurt that these dissonances are mostly played on the stringed instruments, like violins and cellos and stuff. Um, and those have like a softer and sweeter timbre than most anyway. So yeah, let that be a lesson. You can get away with using lots of these dissonant, uh, pulling, morphing types of added note chords if you use your volume and timbre wisely. Or at least, I mean, you can get away with people not noticing how dissonant your music is in the first place. That's all I'm saying, because I mean, I mean, if you're writing like The Rite of Spring or Mahler's 15th Symphony from Hell or whatever, you know, by all means, have all the dissonant electric eel tickle fights that you want to have. <laughs> Go for it. All right, anyways, let's hear some more of these beauties at a medium volume so you can really hear them before we listen for them in the song. Okay, yeah, in the verse we got our E major 9 to 6, la la la, and then E sus 4 with a major 7, that sounds pretty cool. Uh, and then uh, F sharp minor 7, uh, uh, with the E in the root, remember? Um, and then the chorus comes in all over A pedal right here, and it's like, and then uh, E with an A slash A, and then A6, and back to our E major 7 with a 6. Ooh, and then there's these doozies, A, add nine, kind of like that, and then the G sharp minor, remember, we got that flat nine in there. And then F sharp minor 11, which guitarists love, because they just get to do that. Bah! And then B sus seven, that's just three notes. And B sus four, oh yeah, here comes these milky chords right here. Um, and they're kind of hard, but you can do them on guitar, like check this out, it's okay. B sus four, add two, is seven, seven, four, six, if you're a guitar player. Ooh, I like that, pretty. And then E sus four, and then B add 11 is also possible on the guitar, I promise, like this. Ah. <laughs> oh, and by the way, I got a disclaimer. There are a few more variations on these chords in the following verse and chorus says, but uh, for this video, I'm only listing the chords found in the first verse and the first chorus. Because, I mean, there's only so much space up here. And <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, all right, next, here's your accidentals laid in sneak peak chords leading into the bridge from before. Let me just play the ones with the peaks. Um, this one, again, we've heard him before. La, 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 la. And there he is. And then he goes to B. And then A and 11. La, 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 la. And kind of a Lydian sound. Uh, all right, and now we get to the yummy E melodic minor diatonics coming up. And yeah, these are all played over at E pedal. You know, you got E minor, then A uh, with the add nine, and then a E major seven with no third, and then a C sharp diminished, I mean, something like that, half diminished, and then uh, B over E. And that kind of is the same thing as uh, C sharp minor 11, it's one note difference, and then C sharp uh, diminish, and then you gotta play like that. And then uh, F sharp minus seven, and then uh, C sharp this time fully diminished. And we are on to our next section with all the B to F sharp business, uh, which I'm not gonna play right now because my fingers kinda hurt. Okay, shake them out, okay. Anyways, this leads us into the next key of F sharp major and the uh, D sharp minus seven. Na, na. G sharp minor seven, da 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 da. And let's get super ickified with this D plus major seven, and then D sharp, half diminished. Da, 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 da. And that pushes us into now the uh, F sharp melodic minor. And this time the pedal actually is um, the same as the uh, melodic 
major scale that it's going to do. Um, but I can't play a C sharp on my guitar as a pedal, so maybe I'll just sing it. C sharp, uh, so it's going to sound something like this. Uh, and then remember we chop out um, a measure there, so we get to this guy kind of feels a little bit early. C sharp minor nine. He's like, and then just the dissonance explodes, you know, under this guy. Augmented major seven with a flat nine. Seriously, guitar players, this guy exists. It's X three six six zero zero, and boom. We resolve to our last chorus. <laughs> okay, so last though, while I've got this chart up, I want to point out one thing about the bass notes. So yeah, as you've probably noticed, they're mostly just pedal tones or drones. Uh, the bass notes don't really switch around a lot, but there's one place where the motion, in my humble opinion, constitutes a bass line. And you can see it. It's like right here in the middle of the chorus where you go, you know, six, three, two, five, one, right there. So. Let's listen for that bass line um, when we do the sinks, which we will do right now. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, first the overview sync, then back to the chords. All right, ready? Again, I got uh, this version, the uh, Broadway musical original version in E. So yeah, here we go. Three, two, one, sync. The two bar intro into the verse. Dee, 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 dee. And this melody again has no first scale degree, so that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Just ones and twos over E pedal for here. And now we're into the chorus. We introduce five, four, and three. Da, 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 da. Here's that bass line that we hear over and over again. And here's that point five slit guy. Whoa! Got there a little early, didn't he? Da da flu flu note. Love that little guy. And then we're gonna need an extra measure here for this ah 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 motif, which shows up later here. Oh, in the chorus. Na, na, na. Bum, 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 bum. Bass line again. And only seven here because we get to the eight, the beginning of this section a little early, don't we? Dun, 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 dun. Here's where we start to get a little bit of these sneak piece. Sharp five and sharp four. The Lydian sounding, isn't it? And I modulate. Da, 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 this B melodic major scale. But oh, there's that seven right there, which gets us into here. Are we in B major? Or are we in E major? I don't know. All these sus twos and fours. Oh, now we're in this motif. And then it gets super ickified by doing these guys. And then we modulate it up a step to C sharp melodic major mode, but really it's F sharp minor. Oh, and here we go. Uh, oh, there's an icky chord into our last chorus. Bass line do. And then again, our chorus, only seven bars. So this always get here a little early, it sounds like. Very slick. Fermata. Ooh, outro. With all that volume temperedness. We're done. All right, well, that was fun. <laughs> but yeah. Um, okay, one more time with feeling. And with the chord board. Here we go. Ready to do the sync? Three, two, one, press play. Da, 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 da. That's actually a seven to six scale degree you're here in the main uh, violin or whatever is playing that string line. La, 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 la. Fifth scale degree. And then there's da, da, B, A, da, da. Bum, 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 bum. Here's that little bass line. Three, two, five, one. Mm -hmm. Just three chords there, not four, to make it with a seven bar form. There's that flu note, the blue note from the flute. Da, 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 da. 
extra bit of this guy for that ah uh, ah uh, motif. Da 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 da. Bum, 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 bum. Here is this guy. I kind of feel like that could also be a four, but it's actually a six, not a four. Bum, ba, da, 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 da. Bum. Mm -hmm. Oh, and it's a different bass note that time, isn't it? Oh, we're now right here. Ah. Ba, da. Uh, lady in na, 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 boom boom now we modulate then all this sus four add two stuff with no thirds so it's kind of ambiguous and listen to how we just kind of dropped our volume a little bit there to mm, kind of mitigate for all this icky stuff there and real quick we're now in f sharp melodic minor we modulate it back to our key signature. And then that icky thing for just one bar, because now we're back here. Bum, 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 bum. One more time with the bass line that we like. Bum, bum. And we're going to only have two here, because not that guy. We go here. Ha ha. Bum, bum, bum. And boom, a little fermata right there. And then our outro material is just the intro material again. Da, da, da. And we're done. And all right, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this Tonal Turn Spotter Sync songwriting and music theory vlog lesson about the song Agony from the Broadway musical and now Hollywood movie Into the Woods. Um, until next time, make sure to like us and follow us on all the websites if you like. And maybe even stick around and watch another music theory and songwriting vlog. Thanks again. Bye.